right, beginning with the power to the power rule down here. This is part two of the explanation of your exponent rules. So power to a power is basically stating when you have a number and you're multiplying it by a power, you don't add the exponents, you multiply them. So I've been raising a power to a power, and I like to say inside, outside. So inside parentheses, outside parentheses, you multiply exponents. So let's look at some examples. I've got 5 to the second raised to the quantity, the exponent of 3. So I'm going to take my base and I'm going to multiply my exponents. So 6, 2 times 3 is 6. That's it. So moving down to the next problem, this 4 has to go with every exponent, every element inside. So I have a base of 2, so I write my 2. I take my 3 and I multiply it by my 4, which is 12. I don't like to have that covered up. So then I take my x, write my base. The exponent is 3 on my x, and I multiply it by my 4, which is also 12. My y, write my base. There's an exponent of 1 if you don't see it. So 1 times 4 is 4. And then my z. So I'm going to take my exponent of 6, multiply it by my outside number of 4, and get 24. I have no negative exponents, nothing left to combine, so there's my answer. So moving on to this next problem here. Exponent, or excuse me, base of a, excuse me, my exponent with the a is a negative 3. I have to multiply it by the number outside, which is a negative 2. Negative 3 times negative 2 is a positive 6. So that's done. Write my base b, exponent of 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. b is done. c, write the base, exponent of 10, multiply it by negative 2, get negative 20. So in this answer, you can see you have negatives. We want to get rid of our negatives. So the a6, that does not have a negative exponent, so that's going to stay where it is in the numerator. The negative causes the base b to go to the bottom, losing the negative, keeping the number 12. And then the same thing with the c. c goes to the bottom, the negative makes it move, keeping the 20. So there's your answer for that. Similar, but not the same as, product to a power rule is basically saying when you have your product, if I thought I had a highlighter there, sorry. <laughs> so when you have a product inside parentheses, that exponent needs to be multiplied by each element inside. So the product to a power, the power is applied to each factor. Moving on to the examples. When I'm looking at the first example here, my base of four, write my base. I know there's an exponent of one if I don't see it. Multiply my one times my outside exponent of three, and I get three. So four to the third. A is my base, my exponent of three. Multiply it by the outside three, and I get nine. So there, I'm done with that example. Moving on, don't get scared because you're getting longer and you see a negative exponent, just take it slow, take it piece by piece. So I'm gonna start with my base of two. So I'm gonna write my two. The exponent is negative one and I'm multiplying by what is outside a negative four. So a negative one times a negative four is a positive four. Now look at your x, write your x. Your exponent is six. What do you do with the outside? Multiply. 6 times negative 4 is negative 24. That's done. Y, you write your y base. Exponent of 3 times a negative 4 is a negative 12. Z, write your base. If you don't see an exponent, it's 1. So 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. 
Now what do we do? We have to get rid of our negative exponents. So 2 to the 4th, that's not negative, so that's going to stay in my numerator. And you could multiply that out if you wanted. For this video purpose, I'm not going to. It's going to leave it 2 to the 4th. Okay, so now I've got x to the negative 24. That's negative causes my x to go to the bottom. And I just keep my 24. Y, the negative causes the y to go to the bottom. And I keep my 12. Z, the negative causes the z to go to the bottom. And I keep my 4. So there's your final answer for that. Moving right along. Be careful here because this 5 is outside the parentheses, so I cannot apply that negative 2 because it's outside the parentheses. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. So I'm going to start just by rewriting my 5. And I'm going to erase what's up top. You can rewind the video if you need the answer to that. So I, get my, I have more room. It's a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to start by rewriting my 5. So I'm going to go up here. So I get a 5. Start my parenthesis. What exponent is with the 3 if you don't see it? A 1. So I write my base. 1 times my outside exponent of negative 2. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Done with the 3. B. Write my base. A negative 9 times a negative 2 is a positive 18. Done with my B. C, write my base C, 3 times negative 2, negative 6. D, D, write the base, I've got a 0 times a negative 2, which is 0. Okay, so let's simplify now. What do I know about anything raised to the 0 power? It equals 1. So we can just cross that off there because if we multiply it by 1, we're going to get the same thing. So just make it easy. Just cross off that. If you have anything raised to the 0, make it a 1 or cross it off. So I'm going to erase that so it looks more pretty, prettier, whatever, whatever the word is. All right, so now let's get rid of our negatives and our exponents. So this 5 doesn't change. I'm going to multiply that by 5. Now my 3... What happens to that? It goes to the bottom. Lose the negative, keep the exponent. B18 is still up top. It doesn't have a negative exponent, so it stays there. C has a negative, so that causes the C to go to the bottom. Keep my 6. So you can see an answer that would look like what I have here. Sometimes you're going to go ahead and... They, um, depending on who's making the questions, likes you to multiply it out by the 5. Remember, this is really 5 over 1. So 5b to the 18 over what is 3 squared? 9c to the 6. So those are your answers there. The more correct answer is this one here. Let's move right along, shall we? Quotient to power, my favorite. And don't freak out when you see these problems. You're just going to take it step by step like I'm showing you. So the quotient to a power just simply has, if you have a quotient, or in other words, if you have a fraction, that exponent goes to the numerator and the bottom, and the, and the denominator. So the x would be applied to the numerator and the denominator. That's why I have a to the x, b to the x. b would not be 0 because then we would have an undefined fraction. So raising a quotient or a fraction to a power, both the top and bottom get raised to that new power. Example, 4 to the second over 9 to the third, that quantity, that fraction, that quotient is raised to the third power. So I have to look at my numerator, so I'm going to write my 4 my base. I have to apply that 3 and 2 together, and inside-outside parentheses, I multiply. So 2 times 3 is 6. My numerator's done. Base is 9 on the denominator. I've got an exponent of 3. I multiply it by the outside exponent of 3, and I get 9 to the 9th. And that question is done. 
So let's look at something that's getting close to your curriculum level here. So let's look at something like this. So don't freak out. You're just going to take it piece by piece like I taught you. So I'm going to just go ahead and do a fraction bar because that's the easy way to start. So I've got my fraction bar. I know that this 7 has to be distributed to everything inside. So I'm going to start with the, my, bay of, my base of A. So I'm going to write my A. I have the exponent of 9. When I multiply it by my outside exponent of 7, so I get A to the 63. That's it. So, so far it's going smoothly. We're good. Now I'm going to look at my B. I'm going to write my B. I have a negative 10, and I multiply it by the outside, which is 7. So that gives me a negative 70. That's done. The next one I have a C. I don't see an exponent, so I know that there's a 1. So 1 times 7 is 7. That's done. Now I need to move to the denominator. Base of 3, so I write the 3. 1 if I don't see an exponent, so 1 times 7 is 7. And then I've got a C on the denominator. Write my base, exponent of 12, I multiply it by 7, which is 84. So this is simplified so far. So didn't take long. You just had to go piece by piece. So now look at what you have. Is anything, can anything be simplified or changed? Well, I can see that that negative 70 is not good. And I can also see that I've got the same base and I'm going to need to subtract exponents. So let's start by just taking that a to the 63. Doesn't change. Just bring it on over. What does the negative cause the b to do? go to the bottom. Once you put it to the bottom, you lose the negative and keep the exponent. All right, so now I have c to the 7, and I am subtracting 84. Remember, numerator exponent minus denominator exponent. That gives me c to the negative 77. That's done. And then I'm going to bring over my 3 to the 7. So looking at my answer now, I can see that I still have a negative, so I need to get rid of that. And yes, you can jump, and if you understand this, you can flip them, but I just don't want you to get confused by flipping too many times. And if you didn't know what that meant, just ignore that comment. So a to the 63 comes over, doesn't change. What does the negative cause the base of c to do? That's right, it causes it to go to the bottom. So C77. So I've just rewritten this, and I'm just going to go ahead and bring down my 3 to the 7th and my B to the 70. Now I have no negatives, no duplicate bases in numerator and denominator, and I am done. So A to the 63, 3 to the 7th, B to the 7, 70, and C to the 77. Isn't this, I know you're having fun. All right, so let's look at this question here, which is my favorite. I'm going to show you two ways to do it. Hopefully one makes sense. Don't care which way you do it. So option one, all I have is this problem is I'm, I'm going to go to option one. Same problem, so I'm going to zoom up, zoom up a little bit there. Easy for me to say. All right, so option one says I'm going to simplify inside the parentheses first and then apply the power outside. So I'm going to, actually, what that means is I'm ignoring this power right now, so I'm acting like it's not there for just a moment. So I'm ignoring that, and I'm going to look just at my inside numbers. So I'm going to take it piece by piece. I've got a 2 to the negative 1. I'm going to write a fraction bar there. What does the negative 1 cause the 2 to do? That's right, go to the bottom. And I can put a 1 there if I like. If not, I don't have to. That's done. I've got an x in the numerator and x in the denominator. So I write my base. I take, if you remember, I take 4 and subtract 9, which is a negative 5. So I've simplified my x's. I've got a y to the negative 7. What does the negative cause the y to do? That's right, it causes it to go to the bottom. Lose the negative, 
keep the exponent. Now I've still got that 4 to the negative 2. What does the negative cause the 4 to do? Flip. So in this case, it causes it to go to the top. So goes to the top, it flips, loses the negative, keeps the negative, or the, excuse me, keeps the exponent of 2. And then remember that's all raised to the quantity 2. So now I've simplified inside my parentheses. And I could simplify this first if I wanted to, and actually I will. So let's do six, four, to, 4 squared is 16. Um, x to the negative 5. x goes to the bottom. Lose the negative, keep the 5. So these two are done. 2 to the first power is just 2. And I've got y to the 7 still. So if I'm looking at this, I can go ahead and simplify it further, or I can wait and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to simplify all that I can. So 16 divided by 2 is 8. It's not 1 8, it's 8, so it has to be in the numerator. And then there's no other number up top here, so now I have to keep my x to the 5, y to the 7 on the bottom. I can't change that. Squared. So now I apply, I've simplified totally everything possible. So now I'm going to apply this 2 to everything inside. So I get 8 squared. Don't forget to do it to the denominator as well. Write your base. 5 times 2 is 10. Y, write your base. 7 times 2 is 14. And then 8 squared is 64. And then you keep your x to the 10 y to the 14th. So that's one way to do it. The next option most of you will like probably better. It just depends on what you prefer. I am going to first do the outside power to everything and then simplify. So before I do anything else, I'm going to apply that 2 to each and everything inside. So here I go. Start with my numerator of 2. My base of 2, sorry. Negative 1 times a positive 2 is a negative 2. So I took my negative 1, multiplied it with my exponent of 2 on the outside. That's done. 4. I write my base, x. 4 times 2 is 8. That's done. Write my base of y. Negative 7 times 2 is negative 14. That's done. Move to your denominator. Write your base. This has a negative 2 times a 2, which is a negative 4. That's done. Write your base, x. 9 times 2 is 18. So now this is applied. This is totally simplified with that 2 out there. So now I need to look at each element. I'm going to look at my negative 2. Excuse me, I said that wrong. I'm going to look at my base of 2, and I see a negative exponent. What does that cause that 2 to do? The negative causes the 2 to move to my denominator. I lose the negative, and I keep the squared. Next element in my numerator is an x. Are there any other x's to combine? I can see that I have an x base on the bottom. So I'm simply writing that x where it is in the numerator. And 8 minus 18 is a negative 10. So those x's are simplified. So looking at my y, I don't have any other y's to combine it with. So for right now, I'm just going to bring my y negative 14 down. Denominator. I've got 4 to the negative 4. What does the negative cause the 4 to do? Go to the numerator, flip, losing the negative, keeping the exponent. So let's simplify a little bit more. I am now going to take my 4 to the 4th, and 4 to the 4th power, I believe, is 256. I'm going to double check my math. So yes. So 4 to the 4th power, that's all I'm doing, 
is 256. What does the negative make the x do? Go to the bottom. Lose the negative, keep the number. Y, what does the negative do? Makes it go to the bottom. So I've completed that. I've still got 2 squared on the bottom, which is 4. So looking here, 256 divided by 4 is 64. I still have x to the 10 on the bottom and y to the 14th. Notice these are the same answers. Multiple ways to do it, and even within what I did, there's multiple ways to do it, but your final answer would be the same.